Pokemon Insurgents is a very old and popular fan-made game with some pretty unique features. Its main draws were the edgy plot and the awesome Delta forms that were just incredible for its time. But this game is also popular for Nuzlocking, even though not that many people have actually tried to do it, or tried to do it successfully at least. This game has a dedicated built-in Nuzlocke mode that you can select at the start of the game and its own difficulty modes. Hard mode especially is not to be taken lightly. The game is slow to play, even with speed up, which doesn't actually work too well, and unbelievably stacked boss battles with literally illegal EV spreads. Oh yeah, that's another thing, get used to EV training, or at least hacking them in. Games like Radical Red would remove EVs from them, for a very good reason. <laughs> in this video, I will be attempting a hardcore Nuzlocke on hard mode, and man this was a rough experience. Even for me, as someone who has fully nuzlocked Radical Red Hardcore mode for some perspective. My rules are standard Hardcore Nuzlocke rules, so no items in battle and set mode and such, but keep in mind that Nuzlocke mode actually enforces the rules. If a Pokemon faints, you're unable to revive it by any means, which is a pretty cool built-in feature. So how well will I do in this crazy challenge? Oh, let's find out I guess. Okay, so I started a few Nuzlocke runs and let's just say they crashed and burned and were unsuccessful. This game's early game is rough. The difficulty is really whack, especially if you're not using any cheats or hacks. This game is a drag to play. You have to grind manually and grind EVs which is just horrible. And the worst part is, this isn't a ROM hack, it's a fan made game made an RPG maker. So you have no good way to speed up. You can use cheat engine to increase the game's speed, but it doesn't always make a big difference and world encounters are still such a drag. Especially when I go into my bag, or my party. Look how long this fade to black takes when I try to go into a menu. This is so obnoxious as somebody who always insists on max speed up and just speedrunning and playing as fast as I can to save time, this was not fun. <laughs> However, on subsequent runs, I found ways to make the early game bearable. Obviously, you need cheat engine to fast forward as much as possible. I also use the hack in items at the start of the game to save time on grinding. Max potions, rare candies and repels, along with friendship raising berries. By doing this, you never need to grind on wild encounters or optional trainers, which most of the trainers are optional, so with this you can just go from boss to boss and ensuring you're always at the level cap without having to waste time. But this brings up one huge issue which I did not address in my attempts at this game. EVs. God I hated EVs in this game. The bosses in this game will be stacking on EVs to the point where they reach ludicrously illegal levels. This makes the bosses ridiculously harder to beat as they'll be ascending to the next level while you're stuck here rare candying with no EVs. While rare candying does alleviate grinding, you don't gain any EVs from it, making you just fall further and further behind from the ever increasingly strong bosses. Without gaining EVs, this game is barely even doable, which you will soon see. You will need to abuse cheap strats like setup and such, especially as sometimes the AI in this game is flipping random. Yes, the bosses will sometimes click random moves, making it very hard to make good plays. Though you can grind EVs manually, I would not recommend this to anyone with a life that will take hours upon hours to do properly, which I just will not do. I just can't bring myself to that extremely tedious grinding. I would 100 recommend for you the player to either use cheat engine to hack in all the vitamins or just use the debug mode to just hack the game and just max out your EVs that way, it's extremely fast to do that. It is possible to max out your EVs as soon as you start the game by conventional means by just grinding on wild bonds because once you reach the level cap, you basically don't gain any XP so you can infinitely grind EVs anyways without over leveling so that is possible. So hacking in EVs with debug mode is not cheating, so I would recommend that. The game is easy to start off with, non bosses are complete cannon fodder so that's easy. But the first real boss fights are extremely hard without EVs. Rival Damien and Nora, which you have to fight back to back, 
at least you do get healed up in between, but it's still a huge challenge. Damien has three powerhouses, the lead Corpish has adaptability, and barely anything at this point one shots it. He also has the Luxio with crazy coverage, hitting almost everything you get for either massive damage or just super effective damage. Keep in mind, you have no good held items by this point in the game, and he has expert belts and boosting gems, yikes. The first run I got absolutely destroyed by him, even his starter Delta Charmeleon is a demon. Second attempt, I managed to beat Damien, but Nora was arguably even harder. Honej, which has leftovers and crazy coverage and typing. Then after that, I end up just getting swept by Arena Trap Focus Sash Trap Inch with Hella Attack. This is not going well for me. But don't worry, on run 4, I finally found a good strat to break out of early game hell. Here's what happened in the first real run of the game. The first thing to talk about are the new starter choices. Delta Squirtle being dark fighting feels like the weakest choice as it's just bad for early game. It doesn't work too well in general later on. Its typing just doesn't work as a defensive tank which is what it's supposed to be. Keep in mind the Deltas all have the same exact stats as the Kanto variants. Mega Toys is better, though you get that pretty late on. Charmander looks solid, Dragon Goals is an interesting typing while having some really nice moves. The Mega Form is wild, with its ability basically being Shadow Drought, summoning a brand new weather. Delta Bulbasaur is the meta recommended one. Psychic Fairy is useful typing with good defensive moves like Calamine, Synthesis, and Leech Seed, which is pretty nice. And Mega Venusaur gets a special version of Moxie, making it a great choice all game long. If you want to know about any of the Delta Forms or Starters of Insurgents or just any of the Pokemon in general in this game, which there are a crazy amount of and they're really super interesting, go watch this YouTuber here called Selfie who analyzes them in depth, they're pretty interesting videos. Now let's actually begin the run of the video. I get my first few encounters. Caterpie is maybe my favourite for the first route, for obvious early game reasons. None of the regular trainers are remotely threatening and most are skippable anyway so that's nice. I got a Cubone which is just whatever. I get Geodude in the next cave area which is just nice I guess. And here is the most important area for this part of the game. Tin Grotto where you can get a good encounter. There's a 25% chance you get a Heatmore and a 25% chance you get a Durant. If you don't get one of these two, then you have a very low chance of beating the first two bosses of this game, unless you hack in max EVs. Even with Heatmore, your chances are shaky. With Durant, there is a good chance, but even then, there's also a good chance that you still lose at least one Mon. I got lucky in this run and got a Durant. This Mon is so useful. It counters so much in multiple boss fights, which you will see. So many grass types just get hard rolled by this, and needless to say, its stats were beastly for this point in the game. That is fortunate. Blitzel and Fampy are my last two encounters before the big box check. Now it's time for Trainer School Tournament in Damien's first, so you have to beat him without losses or I'll be in trouble. Delta Ivysaur can beat the lead Corpish, but even then Water Pulse Confusion could have been very bad, it still did a lot of damage. The Luxio was a big threat. Its moves are too strong and my three ground types cannot beat this electric type. That's when you know this is a straight up cap. This is where Durant came in and was able to sweep. Its best move at this point in the game is Bite but it sweeps with its massive stats. The Charmeleon is countered by easily because it's a ghost type so that is really nice. Just need to beat Nora. Ivysaur lead can leech seed her so Durant can come in, beat the Hone Edge while healing up as well, and then it just weeps, which is really nice, Trap Inch is straight up overpowered, and Bayleaf is hard walled out. This is why you really, really want Durant. But with that, I'm finally out of early game hell. Time to actually make some progress in this game. I got a Marl, which is very nice for this part of the game. It's huge power, but it had really bad IVs, so you still take it. Now with the fishing rod that we now get, you can go back and fish up in all the areas that you didn't encounter in with water. Finian is decent for later on I guess. Then you can guarantee Magikarp and Shelter, which is absolutely the play. They're too good not to get, especially for this point in the game. 
Remember, this game lets you abuse setup and hazards pretty early on, and who doesn't love intimidating shell armor combo? The next boss fight can be a big pain, but screw that, I'll just use a zoom roll to tank up everything, set up, work up, and sweep. I know some people will get sal salty over this, but since I'm not gaining any EVs, I'm already at a massive disadvantage. I'll use anything I can to win. Now I can go straight to the next gym and there's so many encounters like Rotom, Rock and Rolla, more like Pog and Rolla, Shuckle, Aksu, Grimer, and a free matchup they get given. Now it's finally time for the first gym. This is the longest split one I've ever seen in a Nuzlocke, damn. <laughs> now this guy is not to be taken lightly, with powerhouses revolving around Sun, but with Durant there is a good strat to win. So the first leader battle starts in you need to 1v1 to lead Vulpix. I attempted to use a zoom roll but this ends up being a big misplay and I lost a zoom roll because it's lax nature with really bad HP and special defense. That is unfortunate but one loss for this point in the game is still very manageable. At least I can revenge KO the lead. Charmeleon is the only real threat in his team and I was wary because the AI can sometimes be random. But here it does in fact go for the optimal moves, letting me play around it to pivot to beat this threat. Charmeleon in Sun, with Solar Power, Stab, Sun Boosted, Life Orb, Flame 4 is unbelievably strong, but Sturdy Graveler was able to blast it because of Sturdy. By this point you basically just win. The Iron is easy to counter, and the two grass types are hard walled out by Durant making it an easy win, except for that one loss a zoom roll, which is kind of unfortunate, but I still take this. Move on and get a Ralts. It's the same type as my Delta Ivysaur, so I don't know how useful it will be. I do have to fight Noor again, but this fight was really easy, even though she has 6 mons. Everything on her team can be easily countered, as I have so many more mons than I did when the last time I fought her. And her mons also, they just don't have that much coverage. All you need to know is that Durant auto beats at least half of her team, which is meme-tastic. I catch Mr. Mime in a secret base, yet another psychic fairy type. But at this point, it's just encounter simulator and casual exploration until the next gym. Nobody noteworthy to fight until then. Get Loma Mola, Static Guaranteed Fero, which is extremely important as you will see, Delta Ralts, which looks really cool. Then a Tokipi Egg. Awesome. Now it's already time for Gym 2 and... Good lord, this gym is totally cracked. Keep in mind, the boss's EVs are escalating. But this team is just wild. Many of these mons have almost no good counters. Not to mention, I can't one-shot the lead so hazards will be an issue. Nothing beats Tentacruel and a tight variety makes this way too challenging to beat without extreme risk of wiping. And... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Mega Beedrill to second gym. This makes Radical Red look tame, oh my god. This is why I need to resort to plan B. Cheese Trats. Yep, I literally have no choice but to do this. But I did find a guaranteed way to win. Set hazards to break the sashes, then go to the Static Fero which walls the lead, set up agility, work up, and sweep. I have no other choice but to do this. I did mess up by letting Fiero take too much damage to the lead, forgetting that the Krogunk had Sucker Punch, but it was all good anyways. I'll be careful for that in the future. Flawless win, that's pretty good. Most people don't make it this far with only one casualty. For the time being, I do get a boatload of encounters after that, and I destroy some cannon fodder trainers. I get Trubbish. Whooper, Cast Form, Fledgling, Servine, Riolu, Squirtle, Omastar, Hippopotus, and Nosepass. That's a lot of mons, right? And there's still a way to go before the next gym. Surely things will, will get easier after all this, right? Right? Wrong. If anything, they only get worse because the bosses only escalate more and more with even more EV training, putting them so much ahead of me stat-wise. This next boss fight is just crazy. 
Damien is disgustingly strong this time around, with 6 powerhouses on his team, most of which are extremely hard to wall out. Nothing beats an EV trained Focus Ash and Fernape, not even Gyarados. A Loma Mola was my best answer, and even then, that was not guaranteed as Overheat could have probably just one shot it with a crit, which is pretty crazy. At least the lead is down. Luxury is scary, because it could spam flinches and freeze hacks with Ice Fang, but Don Fan was able to counter it regardless. But this? This Crawdont? It's just demonic. It lives one hit from Superior, sets up two Dragon Dances, and just sweeps with adaptability boosted moves, and it outspeeds my whole team. Yeah, I was just demolished here. The dumbest thing that I realised afterwards was that I leaf bladed the Crawdont when it turned out that Giga Drain would have one shot that Crawdont, preventing the sweep, which made me feel super dumb. But turned out it didn't even matter. After losing the Nuzlocke, I did the fight again afterwards, just to see what would have happened, and I countered the Crawdont like I should have with Sir Perry using Giga Drain, and even then, it would not have made a difference, because the following Delta Charizard basically stomps my team as well. Dragon Ghost, with its coverage in humongous stats, is just too much for this point in the game. Literally nothing in my box can take two hits from this. Nothing one-shots it, and nothing outspeeds it, so I just lose either way. Even if I somehow manage to beat this thing, there's still two more mons in the back to deal with. Oh, and did I mention one of them is a legendary? Yeah, I was straight murked right there. This is the first real Nuzlocke run over. The moral of this run is that you need EV values to be able to compete with the boss fights. Hack them at the start of the game and allow debug mode. It's not cheating because the AI gets it too and you get infinite access to them anyways. At least then you have a fighting chance, otherwise get used to wiping over and over again. This concludes the run. Maybe I'll revisit this game with debug mode and see how far I can make it into the game. I'm pretty confident I could beat it if I do allow EVs from the start. Make sure to like, comment, and all that cringy stuff if you want to see more Insurgents content. I'll be back soon with more videos, so I will see you again soon. Goodbye.